Welcome back to Commodity Champions and moving on to the precious metal space then. Gold prices reached $2,000 per ounce mark in March by six times, delivering an 8% of return. Silver also has witnessed a 10% of gain in March, while natural gas is trading at a 30-month lows. What are the factors contributing to the price rise or fall? Answering that and more, I am still in conversation with our guests here. I'll bring this to you, Naveen, and I'll start with gold prices first. And we've seen good gains on to this one. $2,000 per ounce, though, continues to be a stiff resistance. Uh, Manisha, I think uh, 2020 uh, was one of the years where the gold performed pretty well. Uh, I mean, the, the, all the COVID stuff was happening. There was too much of an uncertainty, both on the respect of uh, the economy and uh, the main street. So that was one of the best of the choices for people to have it gold into their portfolio. And gold did touch $2,085 levels sometime in August uh, to 2020. Uh, post that, there were a couple of things which came into the limelight. One was definitely the inflation. Uh, the gold acts against inflation, so it's a good hedge against inflationary concerns. Uh, the central bank also are buying gold. I think a lot of many central bankers uh, have bought gold uh, over the last one year or so, and I think uh, it is a 55-year high in 22, where the where the where the number stands with the central bank at around 1,040 tons as part of their reserve. So inflationary concerns, uh, the central bank buying, uh, the dollar getting uh, uh, appreciated and later on getting depreciated, uh, the hawkish stance by the Federal Reserve and the world, central bankers across the world created too much of an uncertainty. I think, therefore, the gold performed really well. If you see uh, the 23 performance itself, uh, the white date uh, from January till date for this year, the gold has given uh, in dollar terms approximately 7.5%. And on the MCS, the gold has returned to an extent of 7%. I was reading one of the articles just a few days back that the gold has been the best performer asset class uh, in the last one year and uh, have given the returns to an extent of 15% in 2022. I look forward that uh, I actually feel that the gold would definitely be a good uh, uh, asset class to hold on to your portfolio. 10 to 15% uh, definitely matters uh, for everybody to be uh, there as part of the portfolio, which people don't really understand being uh, a low idle uh, return asset class. But then when it comes to uncertainty, when it comes to questions related to geopolitical tensions, uh, the inflation, the crude and everything, the gold is on the upside. So this year, uh, till now, it has touched uh, $2,009 level. It has not broken the level of uh, 2085 in dollar terms, but in Indian rupee terms, yes, the 56200 level of August 2020 has been broken. And uh, 60,455 have been the high for gold. Uh, I, I think uh, there is some steam left. A uh, $1950 would be something on the support side. But I do see 2010 to 2015 levels during the course of time. But all depends upon uh, how the central banks play out with their uh, monetary policy. And at the same time, the central banks, uh, would they continue to keep buying the gold for their reserves? So Perfect. I think there's little yeah. steam left out okay. even today, even if it is $1965 currently, I think 2010 levels can be seen in due course of time. But but not too much of a bullish, it's a neutral stance, uh, okay. both on the bearish and the bear and the bullish side. All right. So a uh, neutral stand coming in from Naveen there. Uh, Pritam, what is your sense? What is the range that you're looking for in this quarter now? view, I think in ruby terms, if I look at it, I don't see it going below 59,000 because you've okay. seen a lot of buying coming at that level. But on the high side, I wouldn't be surprised if we cross 61,000, 62,000 levels. My sense is gold is just playing by the playbook. Last eight, eight interest rate cycles, which has happened globally in the world economy, we've always seen that at the back end of the interest rate cycle, you see gold prices sky rising and they make a new high. So why should there be an exception this time around? Totally. To that, you add the fact that the safe haven dollar index is depreciated to 102 level again. So the safe haven money which is flowing to dollar will start moving back to gold, which is going to be a double booster for gold prices. So I'm extremely bullish in gold prices. All right. So 59,000 on the lower side to 61,000 plus kind of levels is what Pritam thinks. So slightly bullish there. Anuj, what is your range? Um, you know, I am very optimistic in uh, for the gold and my target would be uh, $2,100 uh, till the Diwali. Um, you know, uh, I was targeting uh, 60000 till Diwali, but now I would like to revise my target because it had been achieved. 
So my target would be sixty two thousand on NCX till the Diwali because the, this uh, crude oil step will also provide the fuel to the uh, gold prices because inflation is there and definitely uh, this will uh, you know attract gold as a, a safe haven or as a hedge against inflation. So I am still uh, very optimistic for gold prices. If it correct uh, around uh, fifty nine thousand, I think this would be a level to buy and accumulate again. And I think uh, it will uh, increase again, increase and may test sixty two thousand till Diwali. All Around right. The... I know Kunal, you're most bullish when it comes to precious metals. So, what are your targets now for this quarter? With the things that we've seen in the previous quarter already, are you changing your stance? And what are your ranges? Uh, like you rightly quoted, uh, I'm bullish on gold, and I am of the view that twenty one hundred to twenty one fifty dollars. Can be easily achievable during this quarter. Okay. And uh, uh, today it is uh, quite muted because of the way oil prices have shot up. It again brings inflationary concerns, and that will lead to another rate hike. Uh, that kind of uh, logic is basically behind today's fall, and I don't buy that argument. Uh, the fact is that sooner or later, uh, either on the economic side, we are going to see some boost, some more boost, or we see a Fed is going to, you know. Stop this hiking cycle. Hmm. Perhaps uh, cut interest rate later, but they will give a signal to stop this hiking cycle. Yeah. So that both the things which I am mentioning are at the verge of happening. Uh, you cannot time it in the futures market. I can't time it, but my best guess is by June we can see twenty one hundred to twenty one fifty dollars on CME for gold and in India. Okay. Uh, that should translate somewhere between you know sixty two thousand, sixty two thousand five hundred, that kind of levels. Okay, uh, most bullish. Most or, bullish or, on the yeah. panel till time. <laughs> All right, that's about gold. But I also do want to come to each one of you to, with your sense on where or, or which metal are you picking up for this quarter? Because the last quarter has shown us that while every metal has closed the previous quarter in the negative, we've seen copper prices gain up by eight percent. Kunal, coming to you first, uh, which metal are you choosing, and how much of gain or loss are you anticipating? Uh, so again, you know, copper. Uh, we have seen a major supply concerns from Chile and Peru, and mm. the geopolitical uh, the unrest going on in both major copper producing country have led to this upside. I don't think so. It's sustainable right now. The moment you get an indication of a easing cycle, at that time copper will increase. But I would say better to be on a short side on copper, seven eighty five, seven ninety. Good levels to short eight ten, eight fifteen should be the stop loss. Seven forty should be again the target. Pritham, what's your sense? Any metal that you're picking up on? Uh, I think I will also stick to copper. You know, it's been stuck in the range between seven eighty one to seven seventy four for the longest period of time. Ah, uh, that's primarily because the, the demand is not picking up the way that we had envisioned. But the supply constraint is real. So, Manisha, even a little bit of turnaround in the global economy, we could see copper prices just shooting off the roof. So, if you talk about a quarter, I won't be surprised if it's able to breach the seven eighty levels. We could see levels of eight ten, eight twenty, and then we could also reach eight fifty very, very fast. But like I said, it depends really on the fact that how the global economy shapes up and how the central banks play out their cards as far as inflation, uh, sorry, interest rate hikes goes. All so right. for me, my bet is again on copper. I would continue to buy copper uh, on the lower end of the range, which is around 770 and uh, with a bullish target. All right. So this quarter could also show copper prices continuing to outperform. Anuj, what's your sense on silver? What are you seeing in sense of a range for this quarter now? And these are, are these current levels, the buying levels? Uh, see, as for a concern about the copper, definitely these are the level to buy, and I'm expecting it may test 900 to 1000 uh, on MCX oh, very right. soon. Uh, but if we, uh, if you ask me for choosing one commodity, then I will choose a silver because it is undervalued uh, if if compared you with the bullions and the base metals. Because uh, every commodity had touched the you know lifetime high, but still uh, silver is not able to test the high of 50 dollar. So it's still it is trading around 23 dollar per ounce. So I'm expecting uh, silver is a still undervalued commodity and. It will take, uh, you know, uh, you know, cues from bullions and base metal from both. So I will choose silver, and I'm expecting in this year uh, we are we will see uh, it may test uh, you know thirty dollar and above thirty dollar you know sky is the limit and might be test thirty five to forty dollar per. Uh, It's a very very bullish panel that I have at hand here. So buy in crude, buy copper, buy gold, buy silver. Uh, any last comments that you would have, Naveen? I have less than like forty seconds perhaps on the show. Uh. See the markets are coming back, uh, Manisha. Mm-hmm. We have seen whatever the worst we would have seen from 2020 onwards. Uh, the central bank looks to be 
uh, look to be positive. Uh, they won't be so hawkish uh, going forward. Mm. So the dovish uh, stuff would uh, definitely have a relief uh, for the uh, capital markets, including the risk assets. Uh, but in this particular case, I think for the commodities, with the China opening up, the crude prices bulging up uh, from the OPEC decision, I think good time uh, to be part of the commodities uh, and definitely 10 to 15 percent, remember, uh, to put the money into gold. As, uh, oh, all as right. All right. On that very bullish note, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and uh, telling us on what to expect from commodities in the month of April and the current quarter as well. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you so much for watching.